Huh. I guess it's uh I guess it's Fuji week. Now let's get into this. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind and I'm fresh off like 8 billion video shoots this week. So much new product is coming, so many new announcements. I can't talk about any of them NDAs all over the place, but be sure to get subscribed so you're notified when these videos come out. Uh, not just the content, but rewind. We'll get back at, into it and talk about all the stuff that happened in my experiences. Uh, for the BTS a little bit is kind of where it lands over here. So don't forget about that. But right now it is like Fuji week. There is new product on all fronts and some big announcements. So let's start off with the one that Daniel got to tackle, which was the new GFX 50S2. What is up with this camera? Well. It is a 50 megapixel medium format sensor. You can see that. It's the same thing as the GFX all over the place, same body design, it feels all the same, menus, all that stuff. But it is a bit of an older sensor, and that means that it doesn't have phase detect autofocus. It has contrast-based autofocus, and it doesn't have 4K video. What this allowed Fuji to do was put this camera out at $4,000 as a price point. That's launch price, that's release price. That means it can only go down from here. This is the most affordable, if not the lowest cost, medium format digital camera ever. What, what does this do for us though? Well, along with this release came out a kit lens, which is a 35 to 70. Now, let me go over here and show you guys. And the 35 to 70 is a variable aperture 4556, and it's kind of the equivalent of a 28 to 55. So this is basically a, a kit. I mean, it's, it's an entry level medium format system and Dan Norton actually got a chance to take a crack at it. I got to play with the camera a little bit, but not as much as Dan did. Uh, let's go over to his video over here. He did everything going out into the wild with it. And by the wild, I mean Central Park with that ultra green water, which is wild. It's kind of like he lucked out because I feel like Fuji's known for like their lush greens, but he also worked in the studio with it. He talks about applications for it, got some shots where you can see what he got out of the camera and everything like that. So go check out that video if you're interested in it. But I guess the question really is, who is this camera for, right? So at $4,000, it puts it in the realm of full frame pricing, which is crazy if you think about it. But of course that comes at caveats like the autofocus being contrast based, the no 4K video so far, but it is a stabilized 50 megapixel medium format sensor and it is clean looking. So why would you go for this? Well, I feel like this is one of those releases that isn't for the mass, but it's for specific cases and it does open up the doors to things. So I've been saying that medium format will get to be the size. The cameras are getting smaller physically, absolutely. Uh, there are full frame cameras that are as big as this or same size, I should say become priced four grand. That's hovering over the 3,500 price range of some cameras. The, the Canon R5 is around four grand, so think about that. Uh, the Nikon Z7 II is around that price range, same resolution, but you get the larger sensor here. And also I said that medium format will get to be the speed of uh, full frame. I don't think we're at the speed portion yet. We're still talking about three frames per second. We're still talking about autofocus speeds and other things like that happening. But what does this open up for? Well, it allows for, let's say someone that's in the GFX system who has 10 grand into a GFX 100, the original body, right? This opens them up to having a second body, a backup system if they need it, that takes their lenses that they've invested into. You buy three or four lenses for the GFX, you're, probably, you're looking into like eight to 12 grand in, in money you put into the system. It'd be nice to know how they have peace of mind that should something happen or you need a second camera, you have um, a bit of a cost effective version of it. it. Also opens up to like students. I think I could see colleges or whatever type of education institution getting some of these at an easier price point to introduce medium format systems to uh, younger generation photographers, especially some of those that will go out and assist some people out there that work with medium format systems, get them familiar to the feel of it. Uh, it there's, it's not for the masses, like I said. I just see the place for this camera and it's just really cool to see that we're bringing medium format down to this uh, accessibility level, which I'm super excited about. I've been talking about this forever. So I'm wondering where this goes from here. I'm wondering what's up. And it also shows Fuji going, huh, we have this sensor. We have these camera bodies. Let's put this sensor into this refresh camera body with a newer processor and some other little things here and there, including film uh, simulation profiles and stuff, which you always get with the newer Fuji releases and stuff. So 
Fujifilm constantly doing their own thing and I, I gotta love them for it. And I'm not just saying that because I, I shoot with the GFX 100S and I shoot with the X100V, which is still one of my favorite cameras of all time, but it's just cool to see them thinking in their own way and doing their own thing. And just, I, I don't see them as like this uh, crazy fanboyish that we always hear out there. So it's kind of cool. But along with this release, that kit lens that we were talking about, the 35 to 70 f 4.5 to 5.6, I just want to note, I got a chance to snap around with this a little bit. It is crazy sharp. Uh, it's nice to see that there is an affordable, I mean, we were talking about a grand for a medium format lens. That's really nice to have out there just to know that if your back's against the wall, there is affordable glass in medium format terms, and there is kit lenses, and there are kit lenses. Oh, my English, guys. And there are kit lenses you can get away with out there uh, that exist for this, and we're just gonna see this continue to go in that direction. And if you're curious about the performance of this lens, don't forget to check out Dan's video. I'll put the link down below, obviously, and leave him a comment. Let the guy know you saw the video and what you think of it. Uh, it was pretty cool. Also, Fuji uh, Film released the XF 33mm f1.4 that I got to take a crack at. This is basically like a really nice 50 millimeter if you think about it. So it, the equivalency of 33 millimeter to APS-C for the X mount is around 49.5 millimeters. So it's a nifty 50 as I kept calling it. And you can check out my video here where I go, I talk about what's going on with it and I got to shoot with a great model Gabrielle and you get to see all this stuff. I even flipped it into black and white around, where did I do it? Around here. So you can check out the tones and stuff like that. Check out the bouquet, oh, cause it is an F 1.4. So this lens was really nice. It's, uh, it's an easy lens. It doesn't monopolize the look of the image. It's 50 millimeters. It's, it's like our natural eye, the way it, it looks and feels. It has a great minimum focusing distance if you like to get closer to your subjects, like I tend to do. And it also has minimal focus breathing, which is great for video, talking head stuff, blogging, all sorts of things like that. So uh, I, I don't know, would you use a 50 millimeter for blogging? Do you have a long enough arm to make it look? Mm, I don't know, you let me know down below if you have a long enough arm for a 50 millimeter look on, I, I feel like 35 is the, is the longest lens I would go with if I had to long arm something. I don't know. Let's move on. Fujifilm also announced, big, big deal, that they are going to be going forward with a flagship camera coming out in 2022 that will be featuring their first stacked BSI sensor for the X-Trans system right there. The X-Trans sensor. Uh, we're used to Bayer sensors, which is actually what's in the new GFX 50S2. This is going to be a stack sensor for their backside illuminated X-Trans sensor. So this is the first time they're doing it. What does this allow for? Well, if you're not aware, stacked sensors are basically faster readout. So they're stacked, meaning that there's RAM built into the sensor, allowing for the information off the sensor to be fed into the camera and processed way faster. This allows for things like no blackout, you know, uh, faster frames per second, stuff like that. That's why we're seeing cameras that are reaching 30 frames per second right now. What's crazy about this is these are APS-C size sensors, right? It's the X system, if you will, from Fujifilm. They've already been really fast because they're not full frame sensors that have more data to process. Since they have less data, they are able to give you more performance and they never skimped on that really. I think the X-T4 is a testament to that. Now what's gonna happen when we have a smaller sensor that's already performing really fast with the ability to go faster? I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm curious to see what Fujifilm has up their sleeve, what they're thinking about putting out. Uh, and if you're not aware, the X-Trans sensor, it, it's actually about how the pixels are arranged on the sensor, the RGB, the red, green, and blue pixels are arranged. In a normal sensor, they're in a certain RGB, RGB like this. On X-Trans, the green is actually larger so that when you take a segment of the sensor, you actually have more of a chance, if not always have a chance, at getting RGB in that segment as opposed to just getting like R and B, red and blue, and not seeing any green. So it's, it's an interesting system if you want go do a, a dive in, uh, on a Google search. It's really interesting. I might even done a terrible job explaining it, but that's basically what it is. It's about the pixel layout and they're gonna be putting this all together with more speed. Really curious what's gonna happen here. I think that, you know, 
we just keep getting faster and faster in smaller and smaller packages. It'll do more with what we have in our hands. I keep telling people that my backpack now holds what I used to carry three cases to do. So it's really interesting. I'm curious what's gonna happen here. Let me know down below what you think Fujifilm has planned for a stacked APS-C X-Trans sensor. Uh, I, I, I don't know, is it gonna be an X-T5? What do you think the name of the flagship's gonna be? All these questions, so many questions. Let's jump into RED. So RED had the Komodo Dragon that came out a little bit ago, and that was a global shutter and APS-C sensor. Now they, they're putting out the V-Raptor. Is it the V-Raptor? Yeah, the V-Raptor, let's go, boom. It's called the new Raptor full frame cinema camera. So this is not like the Komodo that was APS-C that had global, but it is shooting 8K 120 frames per second. That is some high res slow-mo right there. And it has a Canon RF mount, which is really cool. 35.4 megapixel full frame sensor on this thing. And you can get 4K up to 240 frames per second, which is even more slow-mo, but it's really cool to start seeing that we can get Really high resolution, really nice detail. Should we want the extra frames per second? Should we want to slow down the footage? And it's kind of ironic, right? When you slow down the footage is when you notice things more. And we were always at the mercy of things like 1080 when we're shooting 4K for the rest of it or whatever. Now we're here. I mean, this is what's happening. The Canon RF mount is a really cool thing. Uh, as the, the glass for the R system is incredible. It really is. So the mount is a locking RF. You can see unlock lock over here. Uh, this is very similar to what we saw on the Komodo, uh, but this is obviously a full, is it a full frame version of it? I don't know, but if you're interested in this, please check it out. It is a pretty sleek looking camera. I really wanna see what this thing can do. Uh, I thought you guys should know about it. If you're in the red system, uh, give me a holler in the, in the comments. I'm curious what you think about this. What do you think about the Komodo Dragon? Uh, what do you think about their system overall? Hit me down below. What do you think about having an RF mount? Is there some other mount you would have wanted on these cameras? Really, really curious. I'm not someone that shoots on red. I've been around them, but I, I can't say that I actually shoot on them. So uh, let me know in the comments down below. Now let's talk about Sony for a quick second. The A7R2 was a very affordable full frame camera that has been in production for like over half a decade, I think like six years, yeah, six years. And it, it seemed like it was never gonna go away. Uh, but I think because of one, the chip shortage, we have to allocate resources, and two, a lot of cameras are coming up around that price point that are up to date. Uh, that are up to date with things like, you know, higher res EVFs, better refresh rate EVFs, better battery life, you know, uh, more dependability on them, stuff like that. Boop, we are looking at the A7R2 being discontinued. Uh, it's not on Adorama's website anymore. I'm sure they're going to keep servicing them if you've recently bought one. Uh, that's not what discontinued means. It means there will be no new ones made and sold as retail. So if there are any out there, they are probably old stock that they're clearing out. So not a bad thing. It just seems like we have to finally move forward a little bit. We're clearing out the old, getting in with the new chip shortages. We've been seeing a lot of discontinued things happening and it might be good. Just simplify the line, simplify uh, what's going on out there. As a consumer, you look at your options instead of getting uh, all these things and then having things sit on shelves. And of course, you know, we just want to keep progressing forward. And also with the chip shortage comes things like the newer cameras being back ordered to death and discontinuing models so that you can focus uh, your resources as a company to getting those orders filled it's nice to see those things coming into fruition i mean it, it sucks to lose an option out there in some regards but it actually is a, in my opinion a good thing sometimes all right this is sunday 5 p.m eastern time is when i drop these episodes well at 7 p.m eastern time tonight if you're watching this on the release time we are gonna be doing our adorama cup on twitch so don't forget twitch.tv slash adorama xp we are doing the Adorama Cup Guilty Gear Strive. We are raising money for Breast Cancer Research Foundation. My sister is a survivor, so this one is kind of close to the heart for me. And there's been some amazing prizes listed. First place gets an MSI GF66 Katana 15.6 gaming laptop and so much more. Even second place gets a 15 inch gaming laptop. And there's a lot of other prizes going on here, but they also do giveaways during the actual tournament. So don't sleep on that. 
come hang out on Adirondack XP tonight. Uh, it starts at 7 p.m., but I'm, it usually goes for most of the night, so you can hop in there. If you don't know what Guilty Gear is, it's a great fighting game. And if you're into gaming but don't know that game specifically, the commentators really walk you through the mechanics and what's up with it, so don't get hesitant on that. And, uh, you know, it's also just good to see the chat alive. The more people in there, it helps out the channel, gets more eyes on it, maybe more donations. We help out the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, and that would be really great. We do these every two months, so uh, keep up with us. We change the game every time. Uh, we did Killer Instinct, Street Fighter, Tekken. Uh, we even did the, uh, what was it, Battle for the Grid, the Power Rangers game. So if you're a fighting game player like I am, I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan. Uh, Come hang out, all right? Come be part of this community. Join our Discord. Don't forget about the Discord and all that good stuff. And uh, really quick before we uh, get into shout out of the week, don't forget to check out Adorama on Eventbrite. If you are in New York and you're looking for some events to happen, especially with what's going on right now, we don't know how much longer we're going to be having events if things change or whatever. Go to your Eventbrite and go to Ad just search Adorama and follow Adorama's page because some big things are happening, including myself. I am working on putting together a Halloween workshop so you guys can shoot some special effects makeups with me here in New York on October 28th is what we're aiming for. When that solidifies like for real, I'll let you guys know, but there's a lot of events happening towards the end of October from fashion to my crazy grimy FX stuff and everything in between, photo walks, all sorts of stuff. Don't miss out on it. If you're in New York, go to Eventbrite and just follow Adorama. Now for Shadow of the Week, I thought I would bring it back home to uh, Adorama itself, the retail store. This guy is a well-versed uh, photographer, has been in the game for a very long time, worked in the fashion industry for decades, really knows what he's talking about, is shooting with a lot of influencers nowadays for social, and he is actually able to help you right there on the Adorama retail floor in the lighting department. So if you're in New York and you go to Adorama, go hang out with Mike for a second. He's a wealth of knowledge, global shutter on Instagram. This guy has some great street shots, uh, some really incredible people he works with. Oh, look, he's showing some BTS these days. Look at this guy. But he's just an incredible photographer and very knowledgeable and has amazing experience out there. So be sure and check out his Instagram. Hit him with a follow. And uh, if you go to the Adorama store on 42 West 18th Street right here in New York, be sure to say what's up to him and let him know that you like his work. It's really beautiful stuff. And uh, it's really cool that Adorama has this level of photographers on the ready to help you guys out. Okay, so for question of the week, I feel like I'm talking about Fuji doing a lot of really interesting stuff. What's something you think that you want to see come out that isn't the typical? It's Okay, stay, stick with me on this one. We always see more resolution, faster frames per second. What is something that we're looking for that we don't even know we're looking for? I think one of the things I've always wanted was uh, cameras to shoot at lower ISO so you don't have to have an ND filter. You could just dial back your ISO and your camera if you're shooting video. But there's plenty of other things that I, I, I think camera companies are putting into things. And I don't wanna, I uh, can't break an NDA, but there's a feature in a new camera coming up that I didn't even think about that they put in that isn't even really being marketed that I can't wait to talk about with you guys. So when that finally gets released, I can talk about it. Ugh, it's like, you have no idea how excruciating this is. And I, I, I wish I could, talk about all of it. If you're a nerd, it's going to be a hectic, hectic month. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but keep watching the channel. I have some videos coming out, probably even one tomorrow, which uh, was a pretty cool one. And don't forget to check out my 33 millimeter Fujifilm uh, F1.4 video, Daniel's GFX 50 S2 video. And let me know down below, what are some things that you think aren't the highlight features like resolution and frames per second that you would wanna see coming into a camera, whether it's ergonomics or some button you were hoping for or custom controls or screens doing something weird. I don't know, accessories, some weird accessory that they don't even think you want, but you might even want it. I tell them things all the time that I want. They're like, really? I'm like, I know, I'm weird. I'm not gonna, you're not gonna sell to the masses, but I want it. All right, I'm rambling. This is getting a little long. I apologize. My name is Seth Miranda. You can follow me at Last X Witness. Hit me up on my YouTube channel. Join me live on Twitch. Yell at me on Twitter. Check out my work on Instagram. I'd love to see some of you guys uh, comment on some of the stuff over there. Let me know you're watching Rewind. That's great. And uh, whew, that was a lot, even though it kind of wasn't a lot. 
Happy Fuji Day, all you Fuji film shooters. I'll see. <laughs> I will see you next time. Peace.